uh, I'll be uh, giving a talk on the uh, Optilum BPH procedure. And, uh, and again, my name's Garrett Pullman. I'm a private practice urologist from Nebraska. And uh, thanks again to Dr. Kim and Dr. Flynn to, for having us. And here are my disclosures and pertinent to this talk, um, I am a consultant for uh, Labry. And so the, the BPH treatment landscape uh, has really uh, been evolving and uh, really the paradigm has been shifting. Uh, I think men are, are getting smart. They, they know that they're, or they're, we're educating them on, on better options. Uh, they're not happy with medication, the side effects, the efficacy. And the good news is there are, you know, we have more and more options um, that are evolving. Um, and I really don't think there is a, a one size fits all uh, for every patient, um, but that we can have these options to uh, really figure out um, maybe which option is best suited for each particular patient based on their anatomy, the shape and size of their prostate, but also their personal preferences. And so uh, just adding to that mix and uh, another tool in our toolbox is a new drug-coated balloon catheter, the Optilum BPH procedure. So the Optilum BPH is really the only uh, BPH option that combines a device and uh, a drug delivery. And uh, how it works is it involves mechanical dilation uh, utilizing a double-lobed balloon. Again, this is not the balloons we saw back in the 90s. This is a double-lobed double balloon that creates a, a 12 o'clock split, really an anterior commissurotomy um, in that prostate, really separating those obstructing lateral lobes, uh, really changing the shape from a, uh, basically an inverted V to a, to a U shape. And that penetration of the paclitaxel drug into that tissue uh, helps prevent the refusing of those lateral lobes, keeping a nice open anterior channel. Uh, and it does come, the drug-coated balloons come in four different sizes and lengths to really help tailor it to each and every, every individual prostate um, based on the urethral length. And the Optilum BPH is indicated for men over 50 years of age. Um, the, really, as far as appropriate candidates, there theoretically is no upper limit in terms of size uh, of prostate, but the initial studies looked at 20 to 80 gram prostates um, with no intravesical protrusion more than one centimeter in size and for the ability to, for them to go off of anticoagulation. Um, we listed here some contraindications, uh, including artificial urinary sphincter as well as penile prosthesis in terms of contraindications, hypersensitivity to the drug. So some of the uh, Optilum BPH highlights include that it is safe. This can be done in uh, a surgery center type setting, hospital, but also it's been demonstrated to be um, doable in the office setting as well uh, with zero impact on sexual erectile or ejaculatory function. It's effective um, really with Qmax or peak flow numbers, uh, really unlike we've seen before in the min minimally invasive space with 113% improvement in Qmax, uh, durable out to two years in the Pinnacle study. And with a 53% decrease in IPSS, uh, but also durable, 3% um, retreatment rate at two years. The, both the Everest and Pinnacle studies were designed with follow-up out to five years, and Dr. Stephen Kaplan just uh, recently presented at the, this year's AUA the five-year Everest and the two-year Pinnacle data um, with continued uh, sustainable uh, improvement um, in those studies. And uh, this just kind of shows again that um, you know the, the durability of the IPSS improvement with time with both Everest and Pinnacle studies, and uh, really. Um, an outstanding improvement in the peak flow rate. Um, again, like I said, just un unlike what we've seen in other minimally invasive uh, treatment options for the optimum BPH. And uh, it doesn't affect sexual function, no effect on ejaculatory or uh, erectile function. Except for the first month where you have to wear a condom. Yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> Um, as far as how is it packaged or supplied, um, it comes with in a kit that involves a, a pre-dilation balloon catheter. There's a drug-coated balloon 
catheter in, in varying sizes that we'll talk about how do we size that up, as well as the disposable inflation device. I don't know how many were at the cadaver or the skills lab today, but we were able to kind of get a lot of your hands on the device today and really kind of understand how it works and how it's different from the uh, urethral uh, stricture catheter. Um, and additionally, uh, it reimburses nicely too. So far in the ASC, uh, very nice reimbursement. And I suspect that the, this will follow suit in the office setting uh, when it's approved as well. And uh, a zero day global, which is nice as well. So I was fortunate to be uh, the first in the Midwest to perform uh, commercial Optilum BPH. And so I'd like to share uh, you know, a few tips and tricks and pearls about the procedure from my experience so far. The Optilum BPH, uh, in terms of anesthesia, um, really at the surgeon preference. This, this can be done under a periprosthetic block in the office. Um, currently, uh, because of billing purposes, um, I'm doing this in the ASC where we have access to anesthesia, so we'll do some, some IV anesthesia, and that's worked well too, uh, or general anesthesia if, if preferred. Um, your choice of antispasmodic uh, and antibiotic um, at your choice as well. In terms of what you need to get up and running, not much. Um, most comes in the, the kit, but uh, you will need at least a 19 and a half French rigid cystoscope that will accommodate the catheters. I personally use a 21 French rigid cystoscope. Um, your preference in terms of catheters, whether that be a 20 to 24 two-way or three-way fully catheter. I'll get into a little bit about you know, what I use and why in terms of uh, irrigation and, and so forth, just your standard equipment that you'll need for this procedure. Now, in terms of determining the which length that you open of the drug-coated balloon, it's important to, to have an ultrasound measurement. I personally uh, recheck this in the operating room. We'll just slide the ultrasound machine over to the right next to the bed and just check this um, once we get started. Doesn't take that much time. I think it's better safe to double check. Um, and, it, and this is important to take it from the bladder neck. If that patient has any intravesical protrusion, we're not taking it from that, the measurement from there. You're taking it from the bladder neck down th to the proximal aspect of the external sphincter, not the vero. But I'll also double check this. We got the cystoscope in during the procedure. It's got markings on it. I'll do a pull pullback technique where we can check the markings and check the urethral length too before opening up that kit. It really is a two-step procedure. Um, we'll start off, uh, the two steps involved the inflation with the uh, drug coated, the non-drug coated balloon, and then the inflation with the drug coated balloon. So to start off the procedure, I'll start by advancing the cystoscope in, into the bladder. We'll fill up the bladder, uh, pull out the optics. I'll put my thumb over the end of the sheath to hold a little bit of fluid in the bladder. Place the non-coated or the uh, non-coated drug balloon into that sheath. Remove it, and then alongside of it, uh, we can then position it appropriately. As far as the inflation, we'll make sure that the, the balloon bond is right just in front of that uh, external sphincter and that there's a little blue mark that sits past the sphincter. So if that goes kind of creeping by you, you know it's kind of migrating into the bladder. And as we inflate it, we'll hold some gentle counter traction on the catheter. I'll typically inflate it to about one and a half atmospheres and do a wiggle test to make sure it locks in place. That double lobed, the first lobe of the balloon sits at the bladder neck, the second lobe is in the prostate. There's a little kind of a, a waist um, that sits right at the bladder neck that locks it in place. And we'll leave that in place for one minute. You take it down, then you'll immediately look in with the cystoscope and make sure, uh, look up at 12 o'clock to make sure you've had that anterior commissurotomy. Once you've verified that, you could then insert the drug-coated balloon, and it's the same process. I'll inflate it to one and a half, do the wiggle test, make sure it's locked in place, and then inflate it to four atmospheres of pressure. And that's left in 10 minutes. Uh, left in place for 10 minutes. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and take the balloon down, take the catheter out. No need to look back in with the cystoscope. We'll go ahead and place the, the Foley catheter at that point. Uh, if the predilation doesn't make your anterior commissurotomy, you can go ahead and redilate up to three times. I find it's typically not necessary, but it's good to know that that's an option if you're not seeing that that initial split with the predilation balloon. As far as kind of post-operative, I typically like to use a, a 24 French three-way Foley catheter with 30 cc's in the balloon. I'll place this on a light, little light traction for about 
15 to 30 minutes. Um, I have a three-way just so I have the option of continuous bladder irrigation. I, I usually use it because I'll I typically have about two liters left in my three-liter bag, so I'll go ahead and just run that out. That typically equates to about uh, 30 minutes of CBI, and then we'll see how they do off of it. But um, typically, they'll go home with a catheter just for two days, get the catheter out. Um, it's all about patient counseling. They are going to have some bleeding. Um, it makes sense. You're making a split or a crack in that prostate, so it's, it, it, it will bleed even after they get the catheter out uh, intermittently for a week or two. So it's important that you counsel these patients on what to expect. We haven't had to admit anybody overnight because of that or readmission. So um, I, I think that uh, the process has worked. Um, the other uh, factor that uh, Dr. Zorn mentioned is uh, with that paclitaxel drug, um, you will have to counsel patients that are still sexually active that they should wear a condom or abstain from intercourse for 30 days. Um, not too many 50-year-old, 50-year-olds uh, wanting to have children, but if, if they still are, they should uh, use contraception for up to 12 months. And then the standard adverse effects with most cystoscopic procedures. So in conclusion, um, this Optilum BPH, it really does check all the boxes in terms of strong clinical data, really best in class, QMAX, um, and durability in terms of IPSS and with no sexual side effects. Strong reimbursement, I think we'll see that in the office setting as well, and with a zero-day global. So, well, thank you.